Hello, welcome, welcome to Love Clinic. This is Dr. Nelson. I'm bringing you a topic say love leaks. Love leaks. Well, this topic is about the decrease of joy and excitement between people who are in love. Normally, at the beginning of a relationship, people are so happy. People are so excited about having this person in their lives. But as, but as times goes by, the love that was there in the beginning start diminishing. And when love start diminishing, everyone panics because you don't know the mechanics of why the love that had been there full has started leaking out. And you're feeling as if you're not having enough love. You feel bad because this is the person you choose with your own right mind. You chose this, you chose this person and you you expected much from him. You expected much from him, from her as well. And therefore, when you start feeling bad about the way she behaved or the way he behaved, then you start questioning yourself. Was I right in the very beginning of the relationship? Did I make the right choice? We are human beings and we everyone wants to enjoy life to the full. And therefore, we must, we must be having some expectation things will work the way that we really desire that we experience that joy, which is very important for our life. Now, one of the things why love leaks is that people have not created an environment of openness whereby everyone feels that he is free to ask questions. He's free to really uh, to be able to really challenge you in the way that well, he knows the real you, the inner you. A lot of people are really uh, very good at pretending, you know, what they call impression management. Impression management is about someone who is always trying to appear nice. Well, deep down, he is not happy about the nice things he say, the nice things he does. So a lot of you are doing what, what, what the psychologists are calling impression management. So he wants to impress you. She wants to impress you. She said that all the nice things, he'll say all the nice things to you and you'll be impressed if you're not clever enough to understand something is going on. So without an environment of openness, there's no way you really be able to question things in a, in a deeper way so that you may be able to know the really person. You see, if you don't know the real person, of course, you always be dealing with a shadow of a person. It's not a good thing for you. <laughs> so I think you, you need to understand, we cannot love just based on feelings alone. That's why we are talking a lot about being committed. I, I, want, you to, I want you to be committed to me. She wants you to be committed to her. He wants you to be committed to him. Well, when we talk about commitment, we are talking about someone who will express and demonstrate integrity. Whereby he will be able to do the things when he, even even when he doesn't feel like doing it. For example, you don't have to wait for feelings to come over you to say I love you to your partner. For example, if you've been relationship for more than a month or three months, how often does your partner say to you I love you? If you've been following closely, so at the beginning, the I love you used to come so regularly, but as times goes by, as, as, as times goes by, you find the word I love you is not coming as, as, as frequently as it used to be. And when you see that, you need, to go, well, you need to ask yourself, what is going on here? What the hell is going on here? You need to find out. What is going on when you feel somewhere love is leaking? If love is leaking, some, someday you're going to have an empty bucket. So you need to work on that for you to be able to, to sustain this relationship as a happy relationship. Not just uh, pretending that you are in a relationship, you love, you love this person while you don't feel loved. So everyone in a relationship should not 
depend upon how you feel. For example, you go to work in the morning, your body tells you, you should be sleeping. It feels good to continue sleeping in the morning. But because you know going to work is very important, you don't respect the feelings, you don't listen to your feelings, you get up and go to work because work is important. So you need to treat your partner as somebody of value whereby you do things for her or for him without waiting for your feelings. For example, being, buying a gift for your girlfriend or for your boyfriend. You just need to know that well, my girlfriend loves chocolate. My boyfriend loves an ice cream. So you don't, have, you don't have to wait for your boyfriend to tell you, I need an ice cream. <laughs> you know he loves ice cream. Why don't you buy one? Why? <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, don't depend upon your own feelings. You, 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 I mean, you are going to make a bad job of your relationship. You know what? According to science, I'm telling you, you know, this is science. Now listen to me. What keeps you interested in a person? What keeps you engaged? With the person you are in relationship with is a hormone called dopamine it's a hormone within your body within your body system a hormone called dopamine is the one who keeps you engaged is the one which keeps you interested in the person it's the one which keeps you excited about having this person in your life now the thing is this dopamine will only work if there is a positive feedback. Listen to me. Uh, dopamine is this a hormone which uh, make you excited about things when you get a new things when you get a, 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 a rise in your salary or something something new. So I mean, you feel excited a new dress a new t a new mobile phone whatever it is you get excited about it a new car a new house I mean I mean you get excited about it. So th that's a function of the hormone in your body called dopamine. Now, dopamine will be triggered to work in your system if there is a, a positive feedback. Now, if your partner doesn't praise you, doesn't show how much he, he likes you, how beautiful you are, how interesting a person you are, how generous as a person you are, how good in bed you are, as, as time goes by, the level of serotonin in your body diminishes when the level of serotonin, serotonin in your body diminishes as well then there's no there's, there's no uh, a mechanism which will trigger dopamine to work for that person to be excited in, in you so you see so you need a positive feel you need you need someone who will really treat you as a nice person as a special person so when somebody kisses you when somebody hugs you when somebody holds your hand when you're walking you see, he, he is treating you, or she is treating you as somebody special. You see, so those are the things which you, you, you need to realize. The things which you want will, will, will try, will, 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 will add up in a relationship. Most couples, most people in a relationship, are focused on minimizing the negatives than maximizing the positives. I'll, I'll repeat this statement. Most people, most couples, in relationship are focused at minimizing the negatives than maximizing the positives is a mistake positivity has a way of causing the hormone serotonin to grow in its level the level of serotonin will increase as you get positive feedback from your partner Positive emotions help us to broaden our perspective. If our, post, uh, our, our perspective is not broadened, then we become very judgmental. So it's so easy to criticize your partner. It's so easy to blame your partner. Yet you don't know. And that's, it's working against you. So we, you, I mean, you need to, to realize you, you have, you've, got, you've got an obligation to always focus on the positive that your partner is. And when you're talking about the negative, please be careful that your partner does not feel attacked. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I've been in a relationship for many years and I know exactly how, how it can make somebody feel attacked. 
uh, when somebody feels attacked, you always attack back, and you can't. I mean, you you can't run a relationship whereby everyone is fighting another. I don't think which you, you uh, which I think we will be able to, for 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 your for your love to, to stop your love from leaking. Don't wait to be asked to do the right things, which your partner expects of you. Don't wait to be asked. You know what? It's like a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow cannot move until it's pushed. So don't ask for your partner to ask you for money. Don't wait for your partner to ask for sex. You see, if you are always waiting for somebody to ask you, you are putting him in a very difficult position because he doesn't know that you are really thinking about him. You are really thinking about her. And you know what? When you are asking your partner for something and he doesn't have it or he doesn't want to give it to you, you see, you feel bad. And you know what? When you feel bad about what your partner failed to do, when you asked him or her, in your brain, so in your brain, what is recorded is that I am in a relationship with a bad, unloving person. You know, your brain has got two parts. There's a, a conscious part of your brain, and the second part of your brain is called subconscious. Subconscious, in the area of subconscious, you can't control. You know, there's a submarine. A submarine is a ship which goes underwater. You can see it on the, uh, on the surface. So, submarine. So, there's a part of your brain called subconscious, which you don't have control over. So, so whenever you ask for something and someone says, says, I don't have it, or I don't feel like having sex today, automatically in your subconscious, the record, which is recorded there, is that, well, this is my enemy. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you're sleeping in the same bed. So, 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 so you see, if your, your, your wife asks, let's go out this weekend, and say, no, I'm, 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 I'm going to watch football. Automatically, that's how, what, what you're creating is negativity in the brain of your partner then negativity will leak out the love that was there at the beginning. So I just want to advise you, please try to give your partner a positive feedback. Praise him, be excited about him, and don't wait for your feelings to love your partner. Don't wait for your feelings to kiss your partner, to say I love you, to hug your partner when you leave for work. So when you go to work in the morning, just, just hug. Don't, don't, don't wait to feel like hugging, just hug. I do it often. When you go, come back from work, just hug your wife. I mean, you don't have to, please don't wait to your feelings. You will see how happy she is. Have you ever sang a song to your love, to your lover? Have you ever sang a song? Just, just, just any song. I need you and I can't live a day without you. I need you, I need you. Just find a song, beautiful song, and sing to your partner. Just uh, one of the positive feedbacks. It's a very, very useful tool to stop all the leakage of love in the relationship. May God bless you. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Please do. And God bless you. Take care of yourself. Bye.